Botanists and ecologists collect and study plants for many reasons. And since they can't spend all their time in the field, the collection and preservation of plant specimens for later study is important. Herbarium specimens provide a convenient source of material for laboratory study. In this program, we present a guide to the collection and preparation of herbarium specimens, showing you practical approaches in the field and laboratory. We collect plant specimens for a variety of reasons. Firstly, they vouch for the occurrence of plants in particular areas. They're used in vegetation surveys and floristic studies, and as such, form a basic part of our audit of biodiversity. Herbarium specimens vouch for the authenticity of names used in particular studies. For example, a biochemical study of potential anti-cancer compounds. Herbarium specimens form the raw material for taxonomic studies, looking at variation, biological variation, and evolutionary relationships. Thus, they are used extensively in flora projects at the local, state, and national level. And they're also crucial for worldwide studies of particular plant groups. Taxonomy is a two-way street. Information from other disciplines is synthesised into systems of identification, names and classification. Classification involves an understanding of similarities and differences between individuals and groups of organisms. The question of who is related to whom is set within an evolutionary framework. Nomenclature refers to the rules and processes of giving organisms an unambiguous handle by which we can refer to them. In other words, names. Identification is the task of assigning an unknown plant specimen to a known entity, a named species, genus or family. In terms of understanding how plants work, taxonomic studies deal with biological variation with all aspects of the structure and function of plants, how plants breed and disperse, the relationship of plants to the environment, and plant distribution. Typically, herbarium specimens are samples of plants pressed and dried, mounted on sheets of thick acid-free paper, or they may be preserved in other ways, for example, in spirit preservatives. Part of this collection was preserved in liquid fixative for anatomical study. These herbarium sheet specimens serve as a voucher for that study. This is a type specimen. Its name, Callistemon pungens, is tied to this particular sample. Well-prepared herbarium specimens using the techniques presented in this program will last indefinitely if insect pests and moulds are kept at bay. This collection was made by Robert Brown in the early 1800s during a collecting trip with Matthew Flinders and Ferdinand Bauer on The Investigator. Specimens twice this age exist, and so you can see that herbarium specimens form a, a valuable cultural and scientific resource. This specimen's on loan from the British Museum for a current research project. Type specimens receive extra special care. Fieldwork always has the constraints of time and money, so it's important to plan the trip well and have a clear focus if you want to make efficient use of your time. Allow processing time for permits if you need to collect from reserves. Specialist and local advice on where and when to travel can be particularly important in the tropics where monsoonal rainfall may make ground access impossible. Work out where you are going as specifically as possible. Remember that herbarium specimens and herbarium databases can provide you with known localities, habitats and time of flowering and fruiting for target species. Know the tenure of the land you wish to visit. Permits are required from relevant services to collect within national parks, nature reserves, bushland reserves, state forests and flora reserves. And you should seek permission of owners and leasees before collecting on private land. 
In Australia, each state has legislation for plant protection, mostly rare and threatened species. Plants on these lists must not be collected. For instance, in Western Australia, roadsides are an important and limited resource of natural vegetation, and permits must be obtained to collect even in these areas. What kind of vehicle you use depends on where you're going and how much space you need. Two-wheel drive vehicles cost less to run, but usually don't provide as much ground clearance or equipment space as four-wheel drives. An essential part of planning your trip is developing a checklist of what to take. Don't leave home without your hand lens. A botanist in the field is naked without one. A 10 times lens is just fine. Use secateurs to cut branches from shrubs and small trees. A clean cut makes for a neater specimen and minimises damage to the plant. Pole pruners can extend your reach by a few metres. A throw rope can reach beyond pole pruners. Weighted, strong fishing line is easily thrown over a branch. Well, eventually. Once over, a stronger rope can be attached, pulled back and used to snap off the branch. A slingshot positions the nylon line with more distance and greater accuracy. Using this technique, you can retrieve specimens from trees of almost any height, even in forests with little room to manoeuvre. Climbing spikes, chainsaws and shotguns have all been used to collect plant specimens from tall trees, but they're rather hazardous and expensive techniques and are not recommended. Windfalls often provide a convenient source of material for specimens. Mature capsules of eucalypts can usually be found in windfalls. Binoculars are handy for confirming that windfall material is from the tree you are collecting. They're useful too for spotting key features of tall trees, especially in rainforests. What's below the surface is also important. Use a digger to retrieve the base of herbaceous plants and to see underground features. A field library of relevant floras and handbooks is worthwhile if space permits. A field guide to eucalypts of this region helps us key out the eucalypt species that we find here. Photographs or colour slides of the area and of the plants helps you record and remember details of the site and also features of the plant that may not be preserved in the specimen. A first aid kit should always be carried in the vehicle. When on foot, carry a basic first aid kit and water. Know the local risks. In Australia, these vary from area to area. Crocodiles in coastal tropics, venomous snakes in most areas, and changeable weather in the mountains. <laughs>